Let's talk today about one of the coolest new features of Reason 9 when it comes to perfecting your recordings, Pitch Edit. In Reason Sequencer, you're probably already familiar with different ways we perfect our audio recordings. There's Comp Edit, where you select the best recorded takes. There's Slice Edit, where you adjust and perfect the timing of your performances. And now in Reason 9, there's Pitch Edit, where you craft your vocals tuning and phrasing and polish it to perfection. Let's take a look at one of Ryan's songs. Ryan's a perfect candidate for pitch edit. Because his voice isn't bad, it's just, you know, not good. No, I don't mean that in a bad way. What I mean is that Ryan can close the gap between an OK vocal and a great vocal by using pitch edit. So first, let's check it out in its final form. Look what's on TV now. I'll put the kettle on and you'll come out in time. It's a nice song and a nice vocal. Ten minutes in already, and you're sleeping on my side. But let's go back to the beginning and listen to the vocal Ryan originally tracked. Look what's on TV now I'd call that a sign Same performance, same feeling, but his small variations in pitch detract from the song's polish. So let's go in and fix all that using Pitch Edit. To get into Pitch Edit, we can select our first vocal clip in the sequencer and click Pitch Edit in the sequencer's toolbar. Right away, we see a whole new view that looks more like a MIDI clip than the audio waveforms we're used to. Reason has analyzed our vocal's pitch, timing, and phrasing to lay it out on a familiar piano roll for us to edit. But look closer, and you'll notice the pitch Ryan is singing sometimes lands a little above or below the note he's aiming to hit. The first step in correcting his vocal is to automatically center his pitch around the correct note. To do that, we'll select every note in this clip and click the Correct button in Pitch Edit's left toolbar. As we do, you'll see each note shift, some subtly, some not so subtly, as each note is now re-centered onto the nearest chromatic note. Look what's on TV now I'd call that a sign Already, his vocal is sounding more polished. But often, with untrained vocalists, their pitch drifts when they hold notes. As you can see, that drift is represented by the pitch curve, the line that tracks the actual pitch Ryan is singing throughout the note's duration. We can see on words like now in this lyrical phrase that he goes a little sharp, then a little flat, back sharp again, and so on. Now. This isn't to be confused with vibrato. This is just plain old drift. For each note and reason's pitch edit, we can correct this drift by selecting the note and dragging its drift handle lower. As I drag it down, you can see Ryan's drift scaling downwards until, at the bottom of the range, there's no drift whatsoever. But when it comes to perfecting vocals, perfect isn't usually the goal. Natural is far more desirable. You'll soon find that singers tend to have their own drift range that works well for them. For Ryan, ironing out about 50% of his drift on most notes works well. So let's select the rest of the notes in this phrase and adjust the drift to the halfway point. If you're someone who likes to work numerically, you can also adjust the drift in the toolbar. And let's check it out. Look what's on TV now. I'd call that a sign. It still sounds like him, still sounds human, but the pitch has all been fixed and sounds great in the track now. In fact, now that we have the process down, Let's move on to his next phrase, and you'll see how quick it can be to getting great sounding takes. Here's his raw performance. I'll put the kettle on, and you'll come out in time. It's got the same issues. Same sharp notes, same flat notes, and some extra drift. Let's select all the notes, click the correct button to get them onto their correct pitch, and adjust our drift handles to around 50% for Ryan's style. I'll put the kettle on, and you'll come out in time. 
That's it for that one. Sounds great. So, moving on then. Let's tackle this phrase in two sections. The first part is straightforward, just like we've been doing. Select the notes, correct the notes, adjust their drift. Ten minutes in already. In the second section, we've got more work to do. First of all, the first note Ryan sings is just wrong. And you're sleeping. It should be an A, and he's singing something between an F sharp and a G. So clicking the correct button like we've been doing won't get us to where we want to be. We have to instead manually correct Ryan's wrong note by transposing it to the correct one. And that's done by simply dragging the note to the right pitch. We have three transpose modes, snap, jump, and fine. Moving from the bottom to the top, fine lets us transpose the note freely up and down. When I click on the note, you'll hear a reference tone to let me know where I'm at pitch-wise. If you don't want to hear that reference tone, you can disable the monitor button. If fine lets us transpose freely, jump does the opposite. It jumps up or down exactly one semitone as we drag. As you can see from my dragging, it really does jump exactly one semitone. So Ryan's pitch is somewhere between an F sharp and a G, and when we transpose up, it jumps one semitone to between G and G sharp, between a G sharp and an A. A and A sharp, and so on. To change this behavior, we can use the final transpose mode, snap. Snap will move our note to the next chromatic note up or down, G. But remember, we want Ryan singing an A. Once snap has moved you into a chromatic tuning, subsequent moves up and down behave very much like jump. And you're sleeping. That's the right note. Let's check out the rest of the phrase. And you're sleeping on my side. Here you can see areas where the pitch curve and the note objects diverge. That's because in this phrase, Ryan is sliding notes and doing some legato phrases. If we want to clean up and perfect his take, and we do, we need to help Reason understand Ryan's personal sense of phrasing a little better. When I see passages like this, I reach for the razor tool. All Reason needs to interpret this correctly is a couple more slice markers. If you look, you'll see three main sections where the pitch curve deviates from the note objects. Here, here, and here. To correct this, I simply place razor marks on the notes at the point where the pitch curve deviates from or returns onto the note object, like this. Instantly, you see the notes and the pitch curve match. It's important to understand, though, I'm not cutting the audio waveform with the razor tool. What I'm actually doing is adding a slice marker. I'm splitting pitch at its note interpretation so that it can analyze our pitch curve as separate objects. I'll also put slice markers on the other points of deviation, here, here, and here. Now you can see our pitch curve and our notes track nicely. If I want to delete one of these note separations, I just select the note to the right, Press backspace on my keyboard, and the slice marker goes away, and our two notes rejoin into one object. If instead I want to adjust the split point I've made between two notes, I can hold down the Option key on a Mac, or Alt on Windows, and drag the divider between the two notes. But there's an important workflow distinction here, so put on your listening ears. Without the Option or Alt key held down, dragging these dividers is like dragging slice markers in slice edit mode. It stretches your audio and can be useful in quantizing your performance. With the modifier key down, it simply moves the slice point itself, keeping the audio in place. And if you're wondering if this behavior works in slice edit mode too, you bet it does. Once we have our phrase clearly marked out, we can apply the same technique for Ryan's voice that's been working so far. Select the notes, correct the notes, and adjust their drift. And you're sleeping on my side. Now we're getting there. But let's help Ryan even more. The little run he does at the end of the phrase isn't clearly defined. Side. But we can enhance that using another element of pitch edit, note transitions. We've already seen the drift slider at the top of each note that reduces the pitch variation during a note. But underneath each note is another adjustment handle that will help us alter the transition between notes. You can see the transition region marked in a darker color on our selected notes, 
and as I click and drag down on the transition handles, the dark regions become smaller and the vocal run becomes audibly crisper. Let's solo the vocal so you can hear it. Side. At its extreme, transition is non-existent. Side. Pair that with an extreme lack of drift and you get classic tuning effects. Side. But for Ryan's phrase, we won't eliminate the transition, we'll just reduce it. And you're sleeping on my side. Now on to our last phrase of the verse. I'm watching the whole damn time for chariots of fire. Most of this is really straightforward. Let's do our regular routine. Select, correct, de-drift. I'm watching the whole damn time. On the back end of the phrase, I'll do the same thing for everything except one word. The word I left alone is chariots, a word that Ryan bends. Chariot. His bend is intentional, and I don't want to squeeze the life out of his performance, so I'm not going to slice this up and autocorrect it. The only problem is that he's a little flat at the top of the phrase. You can even see it in his pitch curve, which is a little south of the midline for that note, which is D. If we apply the techniques we've learned so far, we would select the note and correct it with the correct button. But that's only made the phrase more flat. And if we use either the jump or snap transpose mode to move it up, well, now it's too sharp. So let's undo that. The solution for phrases like this that are deliberately sung loose by our performer is to just nudge them by ear using the fine transposition mode. We can either select fine mode in our left toolbar or for one-off uses of fine transposition while working in snap or jump mode, we can hold down the shift plus command on Mac or shift plus control on Windows to temporarily drag notes in fine mode. I'm watching the whole damn time for chariots of fire. And that's it. We're done correcting our vocals. You've learned how to respect a singer's interpretation of pitch and how to do it naturally. Or, in fact, unnaturally still has its uses. If you've seen Ryan's tutorial on professional vocal mix techniques, the same tricks can apply to pitch edit. In that tutorial, you may remember Ryan sets up his double-tracked vocals to have extreme robotic pitch correction using Neptune. We can do the same thing to double the tracked vocals in this song by minimizing the drift and transition sliders. Look what's on TV now I'd call that a sign now you're equipped to go out there and apply pitch edit to your own vocal recordings. If you want, you can experiment with transposing notes to new melodies, creating synthetic harmonies, shifting formats, or many other creative ways to use pitch edit. The choice is yours. I'm watching the whole damn time for chariots of fire.